We've had a few comments asking about our gear and how we set up. So this is a reply to those comments. Um, we've come up this hill quite a long way, packed with uh, like a pack horse coming up here to show it to you all because it's, it's worth showing it to you in a nice location. I think if I'm going to do a gear review, I may as well give the background a bit of thought as well. And there it is. So you've got a beautiful view of Glencoe. Uh, it is the most stunning view in Scotland. So what a perfect place to do a review. Right, if you if turn your pans down, I can show you the boards of which I use. Now I brought a selection of my boards here. So you've got the big boards raising down to the small boards and panoramic ones as well. I like panoramic paintings. So that's a full imperial one, about 20 by, 22 by 30 inches. A panoramic, 28 inches wide, a 24 by 18, uh, a 20 by 13 and a 14 by 11 boards. I do, and that's another one, 20 by eight inches. Uh, so a few boards and I carry those in the camper van all the time really, because I don't know what, what I'm gonna come across and what's going, and what takes my fancy. So I have a few boards there. The way that they work, um, I got this, I this idea from one of my favorite artists. Uh, his name was Edward Wesson. And this is how he set his pictures up. And I've always followed him just because it makes it nice and easy. And I have a standard size of picture and that makes it easier for framing when it comes to framing. All the pictures are standard sizes, nothing, nothing out, the, out of the ordinary. So what happens is that this is on a hinge like that. So a little bit of tape on the edge on a hinge. The base of the board is six mil MDF. Then I've also got another MDF board about two to three millimetres, probably two millimetres on the top. What I've done then with the top board is I've cut an aperture in the board and this particular one is 10 is uh, 20 by 13 inches. So it's, it's a reasonably broad, wide picture, sort of not panoramic, but in between panoramic and the, the squarer ones, but it's a very useful size. And this size is what Edward, uh, Edward Wesson used the most. He used that, he loved that size of picture. The paper I use is Fabriano Artistico, and that's in the knot variety. Now, knot, N-O-T, means not hot pressed. So it's not a smooth paper. It's in between smooth and rough. And it's a traditional white paper, not, not a high white paper, which is very common these days. And it's a little bit more subtle, more, more old fashioned in a way, but I, I, help, I think it's nice because it, it gets away that really bright element, which I, I think is quite important to do. The tripod I use is a Manfrotto tripod. They're really good quality Manfrotto. They're really tough and they last, as far as I can tell, forever. Really sturdy things and they've never let me down. So I'm always very happy to use them. This particular one is the Manfrotto 190. Uh, it also has a, a pan head, which is useful for getting the right tilt on the, on the board when I need it. The first thing I've made, actually made, is for the tripod is this. Now you may have seen these around. You can buy them, but I, I've just made mine uh, out of six millimeter MDF. Um, it has a little notch here and in there go the tripod head, the tripod legs. Um, it was a bit difficult trying to make the right size. So what I did is I got little bits of cardboard and I used them as a tester. So I, do, I, I started with one bigger, then that didn't fit, then I did a smaller one, and then that didn't fit, then I did a third one, and that fit. So that, that was my template, and then I traced the template onto the board here, and it worked first time. So what that does is that it, hicks, it, it hooks over the tripod legs like that, and then I open the tripod legs, and there it is. A really useful table, and that's, that's one of the best features of, of my setup in that I carry a table with me and that is so useful. That's such a useful thing. All other artists, they have to put things on the ground and they're not accessible. You've got to bend over all the time, but everything is handy on this tray and it's reasonably stable. It's not rock solid, but it doesn't have to be rock solid. As long as it does what it is supposed to do, I'm happy with that. I see a little bit flappy, but that doesn't happen when I'm actually using it. The head of the tripod is just a normal pan head standard stuff really, nothing special there. 
this is the most important thing of my setup. This thing here, this is what makes it possible to have an easy setup and a firm setup, a rugged setup for my work. I'm really, really pleased with it. It's a simple, it's a simple thing. It's basically just a board. It's slightly bigger than A4 paper. Um, and on the, on the front of it, I have a heavy duty Velcro. I think it's five, five centimeters wide. And I have some strips just stripped, just stuck onto the front of it. I'll tell you the reason for that in a minute. And on the back, we have a, uh, a little bit of wood just to make that board a bit thicker because I und and under underneath the quick release mechanism you have a tripod head adapter which you can buy quite commonly in art shops and then on top of the quick the quick release mechanism here so a nice thing I've rounded off in the corners just to make it nice and easy to carry now this then goes onto my quick release my quick release uh, element of my tripod and wrong way around and there we go perfect so behind this I can use this little panel the, the this little handle here to adjust it to whatever height I need and there we go so nicely set up the next part is mounting my board onto the platform of the tripod and this is where the velcro really comes into its own so we have the hooky part here of the velcro this is all the hooks are on this side and this and the fluffy stuff is on that side and i find that works best really and as you can see i've made an outline of where the board this size board goes and i've laid my velcro on the back there so all i have to do if i turn it around all i have to do is then lay that on the back let it go to give it a tap and it's done really fast and nothing's moving it. I've been in gale force winds and it hasn't shifted, not one bit. Really, really strong. So that's my best part of my setup for outdoor painting. That Velcro is brilliant stuff. I've all set up now and I'm very pleased with the position of it. Everything's at the right height. So the next thing is to load this. And the first thing I load is my water container. I'm, d I'm so happy with this water container. It's, it's been a real godsend to me. I picked this up in a charity shop for two pounds and I think it's one of the best uh, charity shop bargains I've ever got. So I really like it. It's actually a cup and I took the handles off and I've placed Velcro on the bottom part of it. So all I have to do is drop it there and add the water. And it's as quick as that. Really, really fast. Just how I like it. it makes it Anything that can speed up the process in landscape painting is worth it because it, it just gives you more time and you less aggro, less, less effort made. So I'm really pleased with that. And you see, it's, it's really stable. That's not going to shift off in any wind whatsoever. So I really like that. Then it comes to my brushes. I use a little uh, brush container like this, only a cheap little thing, about five pounds or four pounds. And inside the brushes, the inside this, are my brushes with a little bit of elastic band. One of the ideas I had with the brushes as well is if, if, the, if the brush box here tips upside down that way or that way or that way, the brushes can be bent at the bottom, so at the bottom of it. So I, I want to keep the brushes in good shape. So I don't want them touching the top of this. And the way I've got around that is to put them in an elastic band and then add a piece of wood here which is just a little bit longer than the brush, than the longest brush. So there's the wood and those are the brushes. So this is just a little bit longer and they're all tied together with elastic bands so that my tips of my brushes can't be bent out of shape by the top of the uh, brush carrier. So that was another idea that I had, which really worked out well. So I'll pop that on the ground. So my brushes then can just sit here and they sit there and they're not going to fall off and they're all accessible. What other, what other artists do, which I think is a bit of a mistake, is that they leave brushes in the pot like that. And that's not good for brushes. If, if, if you leave them all in there, they're just going to all go out of shape. That's not, I don't like that. So they're all going to be laid flat on here, easily accessible. And then comes my palette, my beautiful palette, which uh, is, is so wonderful. And that has a little bit of Velcro on the bottom 
and that goes there so that that won't fall off either. I have, at one point I didn't put the Velcro on and it did fall off and it did give a bit of a dent. So I've taken the precaution of putting a bit of Velcro on that now just in case. So that's my setup. Pretty simple really, nothing, nothing complicated. And it, it's, it's lightweight, it's tough, it's rugged and it just does the job nice and simply. The water bottle I use is just a, uh, an, an orange water bottle but I like these bottles because they're almost indestructible and incredibly light. So lightness is everything in landscape painting. You don't want to carry any equipment more than you have to. Beside me just to the right here there's a beautiful river coming down from the hills into Glencoe and it's making a bit of a hissy sound so if you hear that hiss in the background it's not the wind, it's not a bad microphone, it's this lovely little river flowing into the, uh, into the glen here. The last bit of equipment that I use, and I search quite a lot for this bit of equipment, and there are lots of different varieties, and it's the bag to carry all my boards in. That's, that was a really important part of it. And it took me a long time to find these. I found them on Amazon, and I'll put a link onto them, but this is by far the best variety I've found so far. It's, 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 not, a, it's, it's not an expensive one. I, I've got an A2 and an A1, and there's no hard, it's not a hard fold, it's basically just a bag. But I don't need it with a hard size to it at all because I place the, the boards inside it and those are very hard. So I don't need to make it any harder than that. So the boards I place into the, into the bag, whichever board I've chosen. And then from that, the, this, the top here goes in, the, in there and also the tray goes in there and the paper is actually mounted inside the board already and that's how I carry the paper around. So this is really good, I'm, I'm so pleased I found it. What's good about it as well, which is the other part I look for, which I, which I found difficult to find, is that it has a strong handle here, but it also has a very good strong webbing handle here, longer handle here, which I, I can carry over my shoulder anywhere I go. So I can carry that, I can carry my, my tripod, and my paints all in one go, not too much hassle. And Tanya, <laughs> my wife's pointing at me what she carries. She doesn't carry any on the art gear, but she does carry all the camera gear, which isn't that much. <laughs> She'll hit me later for that. <laughs> so that, that's really the equipment I carry. I, ho I hope that's helped you. If you are gonna make it, just, just be careful, get someone to, to uh, help you if you don't know much about it. I used a Stanley knife to cut all these things out, which is a little bit dangerous, um, but I've got, I've, I'm quite good with my hands, so I, I'm, I've got the capacity to make all these things. But it, it was quite difficult cutting the, the thing for the tripod on the tray there. That was quite a tricky thing. Uh, every, everything else is relatively straightforward. It's, it's, it's simple stuff, not, not that complicated. So if, if, you, if you can do it yourself, great. If you can't, just get someone else to help you. I hope this video has given you a bit of insight into the gear that I use and hopefully it's inspired you to maybe make up your own gear. Anything that helps you get out and paint is worthwhile thinking about. I didn't do a review on my palette, I've done that previously, so just have a look at that in a few videos ago and you'll be able to have a really good look at my palette system which is worth a look hopefully and you maybe get inspired to buy a new palette. Many thanks for watching again and I look forward to seeing you in the next videos and if you can subscribe or make a comment or thumbs up that would be great too. Thanks very much, bye bye.